The stakes couldn't have been higher in Succession's final episodes, in which the writers took us on a journey of possibility. The audience got a chance to see how they would feel about different characters potentially wearing the crown of CEO. Doors were opening and closing, bonds were being broken and cemented. Or at least it appeared that way. But in the end it came down to two choices, sell to Matson and let Tom take over as CEO, or don't sell and announce Kendall as the sole executive of Waystar, finally granting him permission to fulfill his destiny. All he needed to do was secure the trust of his siblings and four other board members. And while it initially appeared he had achieved his goal, there was one person he had not fully convinced, and it turns out it was his own sister that would shiv him in the back and rob him of his dreams. As Kendall Roy was not destined to take over his father's business, he may have been more suited to the task than Roman, and more plausible a name on paper than Shiv could ever be, but the core message of succession was that those who are born at the finish line cannot understand what it takes to compete against those who are racing to get there. That while they may fraternise with the highest achievers, they themselves have yet to truly achieve anything. Just like Logan said to Kendall back in season one. What have you had your entire life that I didn't give you? While Shiv's decision to betray her brother may have seemed harsh and cutting, the finale really highlighted that the siblings were always a step behind. They're still strategically and intellectually just children. In the penultimate episode, Roman was brimming with confidence, expecting himself to just nail the speech at the funeral and win over the hearts and minds of the public. <laughs> but he failed spectacularly, tanking his own credibility. Shiv then believed she had won, that she had aligned herself with the stronger leader and out-strategized her brothers. But just like would happen with her father time and time again, Matson was just using her for his own ends. And once she got him the numbers he needed, he was now free to look at more serious contenders for the job. This eliminated Roman and Shiv out of the race, and ultimately Kendall became their last remaining option, the one person they would need to entrust with their future. And while he has complete confidence in himself, as his own father promised him this was his destiny since the age of seven, Shiv knows him more than anyone else. She's seen him break down, trip, fall and flounder. And while you could argue that she simply would rather they all lose than let her older brother win, as she had always suspected would happen from the moment she was born, in reality her doubts that Kendall would be good at this are fully justified. You lack killer instinct, you're wet, you're green, you're intellectually insecure, you're nope, not emotionally bullshit. strong enough, you nope. have addiction Wait, issues. That, that's enough. As if you think about it, what has Kendall ever done to prove he can truly lead? In season one, he had a chance to prove himself worthy, but there was an immediate cluster of errors which caused him to be cut out of the business and spiral into drug use. In season two, he became his father's puppet and took up casual shoplifting alongside his drug use to silence the emotional agony inside himself. Then in season three, he proved that even when he had the right position and ethical advantage, he still didn't have the contacts, power, influence or know-how to do anything with it, which caused him to lose his sense of identity and nearly kill himself. After Logan's death, he delivered a few moments of success, such as the Living Plus speech. But even then, it was a rocky start, and he was leaning on the fact he was his father's son, not able to define a clear vision or personality of his own. And when it came down to it in the presidential election, he proved that he had no real ethics either. It was just whatever would help him personally. So what exactly would a future look like with Kendall as CEO? Every time something goes wrong, how will he know what to do without being able to call his dad? Will he not just crumble and retreat to self-destructive behaviour like he always does? Has he ever truly even been in control of anything? Or was he always just being used as a pawn, either by Logan or Sandy and Stewie? His only real business achievement was buying Volter at an inflated price, a company that he later closed after just one year. Kendall winning just never felt right to Shiv. He's not as competent, capable, or likeable as he thinks he is. He's constantly biting off more than he can chew, and then buckling under the pressure when it all becomes too much. 
His final failure was his inability to convince his siblings that he was a safe pair of hands. Once he was under the threat of losing, it didn't reveal his leadership strengths, it only further underlined his glaring weaknesses. Shiv states that he can't be CEO because he killed someone, as that is how he framed the story to her at the end of season 3. While this may seem petty, it's a legitimate concern, as the family now sinks or swims on Kendall's reputation, a reputation that's not built on steady ground. And the way Kendall handles this issue in real time is to childishly claim he was lying back then. That didn't happen. Wait, uh, it didn't, it's, as in that, what? It's just, just, it's just a thing I said, it's a thing I said, I made it up. You made it up. So he's either lying now, or he was lying previously in order to manipulate them. But either way, he's not taking responsibility or revealing himself to be safe enough to vote for. Instead, he starts screaming that he's the eldest son, even though he isn't, exposing himself as an entitled child who just wants it for himself and is willing to say anything to get it but he hasn't thought through whether he can really do it, or what would happen if these issues ever surfaced. The scene devolves into childish squabbling, ripping each other apart emotionally, the one skill Logan has properly trained them all to do. This isn't professional, this isn't strategic, it's just children playing dress up in daddy's office. We've seen this theme consistently throughout the series, with Marsha telling Shiv, he made you a playground, and you think it's the whole world. And in his final days, the defining decision Logan made was that he didn't trust any of his children to take over. He didn't consider them serious people. And over this last season, each child has gradually learned this painful lesson. Roman has accepted it, Shiv has realised it, Connor's polling results proved it, and now it's time for Kendall to process it. No. no. Yeah. Hey, we are bullshit. The decision is easiest for Shiv because, as always, she has options. The father of her child is set to be CEO if they sell. So for her, it's a choice. Do you want your self-destructive, egotistical brother to take over, or your loyal, hard-working husband? In a season centred around loss, Tom emerges as the major winner. Just three episodes previously, he was set to lose his job as well as his wife, and by the end of the finale, he's earned a promotion to the highest position in the company, and for the first time ever in their marriage, he now has the upper hand. You're marrying a man fathoms beneath you because you don't want to risk being betrayed. While Tom was underestimated from the beginning, he proved himself to be more strategic than everyone else. On paper, he made his first moves on Shiv when she was heartbroken and potentially rebounding. He then proposed to her when she was emotionally compromised with her father in hospital. He then remained a loyal servant, angling for promotions but ultimately seeming harmless and supporting his wife's ambitions when it appeared she was next in line to the throne. But as an outsider, Tom has always had an acute awareness of the children's deficiencies. He's seen them all get screwed over again and again, yet Logan always emerges the victor. So knowing real strength when he sees it, Tom threw himself at his father-in-law's feet, offering to go to jail as his fall guy, and when the time came, even betraying his own wife to give Logan the upper hand. After Logan passed, Tom's hard work appeared to be for nothing as now he has to start all over again with Lucas Madsen. But like always, he sticks to his technique and appears neutered and obedient to power. As unlike the Roy children who only know their father, Tom knows how power-hungry billionaires really operate. They don't want a competitor who will fight them at every turn and then betray them like the siblings have been trained to do. They don't want to feel manipulated or outmaneuvered. They just want a loyal servant a safe pair of hands they can puppet master. I admire you, man. Look, at you're a long way from home. You're far from the tree. You've played your hand well, and you're sitting at the top table. Tom Wamscans knows how to play the game, whereas Shiv and Kendall just think they'll win because their father owns the board. As that's really what Succession has shown us over four seasons, that those born into extraordinary wealth live in a different reality to the rest of us. They've been simultaneously handed every imaginable opportunity and advantage. 
while also being prevented from ever truly learning the hows and whys of this world, as their lives are populated with superficial connections and transactional relationships. They're sheltered from competition, insulated from consequence, and isolated from compassion. At their core, they're just as human as any of us, longing for a sense of purpose and an equal need of emotional nourishment. But in a cutthroat game of power, where there are only winners or losers, the natural order will prevail, and those who were handed everything through nepotism will ultimately fall to those who have risen up through meritocracy. As excellence isn't something you're simply born into, it's something you must battle to become. Well, if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you for watching, but if you could now give the video a like, possibly even leave a comment and click on that subscribe button, it will encourage that mysterious algorithm to do its thing. And if you want to support the channel personally, you can check out my Patreon.